Hello everyone. Previously we already looked on to the basic setup of Angular JS for your front end web applications. Today we will deep dive into the concepts of Angular JS, what is the actual architecture of Angular JS, how we can use it and how we can make our our web applications more optimized and more usable like single page application. So we will take a look on all those different aspects of Angular JS, how it is different from other front end technologies and how it is becoming a popular in comparison to other technologies. So first of all, Angular is a single providing a single page application feature and it is a MVC. There are a lot of frameworks available in the market like Ember JS, Knockout JS, Angular JS, but now Angular has a lot of features which is making it different from others. And that's why it is taking over to those frameworks like Ember JS, Knockout JS. These are also popular but not much as Angular. So Angular is a full stack of MVC framework. MVC is in the browser tech client side. It also provides a caching mechanism, routing mechanism. You can define your different logics which are interacting with the backend in a, in a factories, in a services and interact those components with the controller through the views. So Angular provides a feature of a multi-modularity. You have to define different modules then those modules will be having a different controllers. Controllers will be interacting with the services and factories. So that is a overall layout. We will take a look. But if you see the web app architectures in the recent years, what all different technologies we are having. So if we see that Groovy is coming to the existence, HTML5 now we are having. So there are a lot of MVC frameworks are available for the front end design. But the Angular JS is taking over all those like Servlet, uh, Servlet, String MVCs. So these are also MVC frameworks. But if you want a single page applications with all those features, then we we want Angular JS to take that place of front end as an MVC. The backend can be anything like your Spring backend, you, you're deploying anything on the server, getting the data through the REST, REST services or JAXWS services. So that can be anything. So if you see in the 90s we have simple HTML stand, we got some solid, some MVC framework, J2E MVC framework, then we got a Grails, now we have a Ruby also there, we got some Ajax and jQuery. So now after looking at the Ajax and jQuery, so this is a modern MVC framework, you can say an extension of Ajax because Ajax is also something like that in which you are, you are just sending an XML HTTP request and getting the data and just modifying a particular section of your page. So Angular JS is a modified version extension of that. You can say in just, a, just try to just to understand it. So it is MVC model view controller. View can be anything if you are running a Java project, you can put a JSP pages, HTML pages. Model will be something which will be interacting with your business. Controller is something which is either getting the data from view or setting the data from view or showing it on your HTML or JSP pages. So what are the goals of using this Angular design? First of all, now we have, we want our applications to run on multiple devices, tablets, mobile or mobile OS, mobile phones. So we want our design to be responsive. So the, we already have a bootstrap feature. So we can use a bootstrap and Angular JS both together. Now the different features of Angular is it provides a single page application where you do not need to refresh your browser for any request. It has an inbuilt routing system. You just need to click on the, that page. That page will be rendered without refreshing the browser. Similarly, it has a lot of modules available. A lot of developers are there. It provides a module support for internationalizations and localizations. It provides a support for routing. It provides a support for task automate or task automations. It provides a support and integrations with these front-end tools like Grunt, Bower, Yeoman, 
product tools are now available through node package manager which can be integrated with any front end application so your applications which is using angular and bootstrap can also use them it provide a modular support when you will when we go in next tutorials you will see that we will be creating some modules and those modules will be having all the structure of angular so what is sps pa by just a single page application which angular provides you do not need to refresh your browser it is just loading all the content of your website in a one go and then it is using the internal routing to show the different views of your application so we can see the front end framework full stack of front 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 end framework if you heard about mean stack where m stand for mongo e4 express o4 a4 angular and n4 node so mean stack is a new technology which is combinations of these different front end technologies so we are not going into that but it is just about all those different framework express js node js and different front end tool like kerma jasmine and bower kerma and jasmine are these are some task runners for the grunt so minifications and uglifications these are also task of grunt there are different ui tools are available for the front end applications and just like two way winding for the two way winding we can two way winding we can use angular js knockout js is also one of the framework available in the market and for the hybrid app on native web apps for mobile or mobile systems phone gap is also there so these all uh, tools and technologies are available on the node package manager so you can use it now what all different features a single page application is providing because these all features are related to the angular data binding means data binding means binding the data from your view to the back end so that you can fetch them automatically routing means when you are clicking on any link it is using internal routing to render that page it also provide a testing framework so you can create a test cases whenever you are interacting with the back end it provide a jqlite this is a framework this is a internal feature so jqlite is a replacement of jquery so angular is using jqlite to use the jquery features it is using factory and services to interact with the back end applications to fetch the data from rest service some any other web service or sending or posting the data controllers will be interacting with your direct to your views to render the data to set the data to get the data validation angular has a strong validations like html input form validation so that is that part is now become easier if we do a validation dependency injection angular provide a modular dependency injection in which you can inject different modules inside your main modules so how this modular because we are using a modular approach we are where we will be using different modules so angular has a different modules some is someone is route modules some one is a resource modules so you can inject those modules according to your requirement if you, your application is using routing then you can inject the routing module in your main app module we will see into that that code how we can do it so this if you see this front end structure uh, the overall structure of angular application this is a root module which may be dependent on these other modules other modules can be anything external module or modules provided by the angular developers so first of all we will be having a modules then config config can have a routes configured to that route means internal routing when you clicking on different links different pages then internal routing is being used routing will interact with the different views and controllers so the controller is controller is passing the data to the views and a scope is playing the role of exchanging the data between views and controllers now further controller can use these factories and services to get the data from back end send the data to the back end so this is the main structure of angular which will be seen angular's most important feature is it is providing two way data binding if you are rendering something on your html page then you can send the data as it is to the back end it is a two way binding we can you can bind those variables like html input fields you can bind each and every 
HTML form field to the backend. So when you submit, it automatically sending those data to the backend. Dependency injection is one of the most important feature. Watch else if you want to keep a watch, keep a observer watch on particular scope variable or something, then watchers are already available. So these we will be take a look. Now most important feature is the caching mechanism because what we are doing if we are using angular in our application then whole application is being loaded on your browser and stored in some cache so whenever you will be sending some uh, request from your front end you do not need to go to go to the rest server or any application server if they uh, if that data is available locally so the caching mechanism is being used here which is optimizing your application if the data is now locally available you do not need to refresh the browser you do not need to send a request to the backend server if that is not required because using the internal routing those features are now available what the angular is doing angular is just sending an internal request to the angular application and again changing this dom structure dom is a document object model which we see in a index.html so whenever you are clicking on index.html, help.html, it is just changing the DOM object. It is just replacing some content on your DOM. So similar just like an application of nested views. When you click it, click on this one page, this view is getting appeared. Now when you click click on one link, this this particular division is just changing. Otherwise everything is getting seen. So this is the feature of routing which is being used here and it is also optimizing the application because it is now become a single page application we do not need to send an HTTP request to the backend to fetch the data so that's all for this tutorial we will be looking at how to create a module how to write a controller factory and services one by one because this is just a start this is just for the beginners so we will be starting for the beginners and we will do a deep dive into the different concepts of angular thank you for watching please hit a subscribe button we'll see you in the next tutorial